Garrett Blevins here today with our next video in the uh, practical programming for strength training series. Today we're going to be talking about work load, work tolerance, and also about overtraining and why this becomes a uh, bigger and bigger problem uh, for lifters as they become more advanced. So, I wanted to use this chart today to talk about it. <sighs> so you can see here that this section is about work tolerance whereas this is about workload. So as your work tolerance increases, the amount of work that you can do or volume that you can do and recover is increasing. And this makes sense. As you become more and more trained, it takes a larger and larger stimulus for your body to be thrown out of homeostasis so that it has to adapt because you're becoming more adapted to the training stimulus. So you need more stimulus to have more adaptation. Now you can see here this line here represents a novice lifter and you can see that it's a fairly slow sloping arc back and forth. Now obviously the maximum workload is here or work tolerance rather is at this line and so let me get a pin here and so if we draw a little dashed line across here you shouldn't do more work than this amount of volume whatever that is maybe that you can handle a thousand pounds of volume per workout of working sets now you're physically capable of maybe doing 1500 pounds of volume per workout but that extra 500 isn't going to help you manifest any of the gains that you would get at just a thousand and so you're actually overreaching too much. You're putting too much of a strain on your body so that the stimulus pushes you into a phase that's beyond overreaching, which means you can recover from it, and that, that is by the next workout or by the end of the micro cycle for super compensation purposes. And it pushes you beyond overreaching, which is a good thing, into overtraining, which is a bad thing. Overtraining is defined as so much fatigue that you cannot recover from it in one microcycle and it takes at least one entire reduced training cycle or microcycle to recover from that overtraining. That's what overtraining really is. So it's not a deload. It's not where you can just deload one day and then you're back to go, good to go. That just means you maybe overdid it a little bit in one workout. But if you overdo it consistently, let's say over let's say you're an advanced athlete and you overdo it for a month it is going to take you an entire month to come back from that overtraining. And so that's how overtraining is defined. Now, as a novice, you see how slow this slope curves off here? They've got a lot of leeway. So if they overtrain a little bit, you know what? They can just go light on the next workout. Their micro cycle is only three days long anyways. So if they make a mistake, it's not really a big deal. But if your micro cycle is a month long and you miscalculate it, it is going to take you a whole month to recover, at least if your training was that far off. And that's how overtraining is uh, defined. Overreaching just means that you had so much stimulus that you caused your body to become fatigued, that you're no longer as strong as you used to be, but you have enough time to recover between your next workout or your next heavy workout so that you can actually manifest gains and have a super compensation. So, as you can see, this line is fairly even. As you come into the intermediate line, there's more of a steep drop off. This means that you have to be more on point with knowing what your workload is so you can do the amount of volume necessary. If this was a thousand pounds, let's say this is three thousand pounds of volume per working set or whatever. These are just random numbers. I don't know what the actual amount would be per person. You'd, that's very individualized. The only way you're going to know that is if you keep track of your volume and you go into periods where you are overtrained and you're like, whoa, that was too much volume. I didn't need that much. It was too much for me to recover from. That means one of two things. Either you did too much work in a workout and you just need to pull it back, or you're going to have to have a more advanced micro cycle because if you do less volume, you don't make any progress. That means your training is going to have to become more complex. In any case, there's a sweet spot, which would be at the highest amount of work tolerance that you have, that's the workload that you should use for optimal gains. Again, this is a slow curve it's pretty easy to come back from overtraining because your micro cycle is only three days long. This one it's a week long so maybe you get you have to take a whole deload week 
to recover from that overtraining, but it's not that bad. It's really until you get to the advanced level and you see here, there's this line and then this steep drop off. It's very easy for advanced athletes to overtrain because they are on the limit, the edge of their potential. And so if they push it too far, it is a steep drop off. But if you're tracking your volume and you're paying attention to what you do, you're gonna slowly, I mean, it doesn't jump from this to this to this. There's all these other curves in between here where you get to learn about your body and you slowly progress through the stages as your microcycles become longer and you have to incur more fatigue that you recover from to push gains forward. And you know what? Sometimes you're probably gonna push it too far and that's okay, that's part of the journey. Hopefully you learn some of those lessons early so that you're not spending a lot of time in overtraining. This is one of the things that I struggled with early on because I figured, um, early on in my lifting career that is, I figured you know the more work I do the stronger I'll get. And so I was actually training somewhat like an advanced um, uh, trainee early on in my training career because I was doing 12 week uh, micro cycles. Like that's what my, my cycle of training was. It was a 12 week block of training and I didn't max again or wasn't supposed to max again until 12 weeks. But I didn't listen to my coaches. I would max on bench press every single day that I could. I mean, I was maxing on bench two or three times a week and I was setting PRs when I was doing that. And that's because I was gaining strength like a novice athlete. The redeeming thing about the training program where I was in that 12 week uh, micro cycle is that I could up my percentage or up my one rep max, I could go tell my coach at any time, and even mid-cycle he would rerun all my numbers, so the next workout that I did would be based on the max that I had just set. And it was for that reason that that training early on worked for me, because I didn't keep the number static. This is a terrible way to set up a program though. Uh, it worked out for me, I kind of lucked into it, but it's not a good way to go into a program thinking that I'm going to do linear periodization, and I'm just going to update my maxes all the time. It only worked for me because I was making gains like a novice where I could recover from pretty much any mistake I did in a couple of days anyways. So I hope that helps you understand overtraining. Overtraining is defined as however long your micro cycle was where you overtrained, it takes that same amount of time for you to recover. You have to deload the same amount of time. If it's anywhere less than that, that just means you were overreached a little bit. You may have been approaching overtraining, but you can deload a few days and you may actually have a super compensation from that stimulus. The reason why you wouldn't want to go into that really close to overtraining point too often is because your body is going to adapt to that extreme overreaching and you're going to need even more volume next time to get your body to adapt. You're actually going to adapt too quickly to that amount of volume so that it's going to be even harder next time to make gains because you're going to have to do more volume. That's the danger with some of these programs that have a lot of volume. You really shouldn't use more volume than you need to. There's that optimal sweet spot, which is just at your work tolerance before it starts to drop off because you can't recover from it. But it's not so light on the volume that you're not disrupting homeostasis in the first place. So that's what overtraining is, and that's how it relates to super compensation and workload and work tolerance. Hope wherever you're at, you're doing well. Blessings.